the proclamation of the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the time arrived for Elizabeth to have her child, she gave birth to a son. Her neighbors and relatives heard that the Lord had shown His great mercy toward her, and they rejoiced with her. When they came on the eighth day to circumcise the child, they were going to call him Zechariah after his father. But his mother said in reply, No, he will be called John. But they answered her, There is no one among your relatives who has this name. So they made signs, asking his father what he wished him to be called. He asked for a tablet and wrote, John is his name. And all were amazed. Immediately, his mouth was opened, his tongue freed, and he spoke, blessing God. Then fear came upon all their neighbors, and all these matters were discussed throughout the hill country of Judea. All who heard these things took them to heart, saying, What then will this child be? For surely the hand of the Lord was with him. The child grew and became strong in spirit, and he was in the desert until the day of his manifestation to Israel. The Gospel of the Lord Our Gospel for today, the Solemnity of the Birth of John the Baptist, comes from St. Luke. We have here a brief account of the birth of John the Baptist and a rather long account of what happened during his naming, eight days after his birth. We know that it was the angel that appeared to Zechariah, his father, who told him the name that will be given to the child. John. Now, we see that there were so many people who went to the house of Elizabeth and Zechariah when they heard about the child was already born, already born. Well, this is not only out of curiosity, but this is out of thanksgiving to God. People knew that on this day, the birth of John, the birth of this baby boy, The curse, the curse that Elizabeth had to bear was finally lifted, thanks to God's intervention. So this was a moment when the community also gathered to thank God and to behold in awe and wonder the action of God in this couple, Zechariah, Elizabeth. Now, the drama. What name will be given to the child? The custom at that time was to use the name of the father or one of the relatives. So you use the name that will identify you with your clan, with your blood family. But Elizabeth said his name will be John. And the family members and the neighbors protested. Said, well, no one among your relatives is named John. And so they signaled to Zechariah, who at this point had no capacity to speak. You know, he doubted the prophecy coming from the angel. And so as a punishment of sorts, he was made dumb, mute, until the birth of the child. So now, he was asked, what is the name of the child? And using a writing tablet, he wrote, his name is John. He finally, finally accepted the message from the angel. The message that he first doubted now has been fully accepted. This is a child of God, and his name will come from God, John. After that, he was able to speak again. Now, the name John, it has a meaning. John means God is benevolent. God has been gracious to us. God is good to us. This does not only depict the reality of the birth, the coming to being of this miraculous child, This is also the program 
of the life of John to proclaim the nearness of God's love in Jesus Christ. Jesus will come as the advent of God's grace in its fullness, God's graciousness. And it is the mission of John the Baptist to prepare the people to receive the gracious God present, actively present in Jesus Christ. And so naming is important, my dear brothers and sisters. May I remind all of you, especially those who have children that will, they will bring to church for baptism. You know, I encounter, oh, hilarious names. I encounter names that are quite um, suspicious. <laughs> and if names are a, 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 a depiction of a child's life program, what is the program of a child whose name is XYZ? No. And I asked this child in confirmation, how do I pronounce your name? Ekiz. Now tell me, what is the life project of Ekiz? Today, we have a, 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 a child named John. God is gracious. God is providential. And so, his whole life will be spent being a proclaimer, a prophet of the gracious God. Now, the people who witnessed all of this were enveloped with divine fear, fear of God. And they asked the question, what will happen to this child? What will happen to this child? Obviously, the hand of God is on him. And this episode ends with a short summary. The child grew up and matured in spirit. This child, whose conception and birth were born out of God's grace, now lives up to his origin. He did not only grow up, he grew up in spirit, in holiness. And where did he go? When he reached the age of maturity, he went to the desert, the wilderness, to prepare for his mission. In the desert, in the dryness of the desert, he encountered God, the Word of God. In the desert, you don't hear anything. You are attuned to God's Word. And so the first reading is fulfilled. The vision of Isaiah, of a servant, who will know the Word of God and proclaim it with courage. In the harsh realities of the desert, John learned how to listen to the Word of God and how to be courageous. That combination in the desert, alone with God, he fulfilled his mission and his name. But in the desert too, you don't have anything. You don't have access to comforts. You don't have access to services, social services, health services, whatever. In the desert, you learn how to be poor. You learn how to depend on God. In the desert, John learned humility. What the second reading stresses, the humility of John, not claiming to be the Messiah, knowing who he is, living in truth, being a true pointer to the gracious God in Jesus Christ. In the desert of nothingness, a prophet is formed to be courageous, to listen to God, and to be humble. This is what the person who prepared for the coming of the Lord possessed. This was how he was formed in the desert of prayer, in the desert of nothingness, someone hears the Word of God and courageously proclaims it in humility. We need courage to be humble. Being humble is not for the weak. True humility comes only from the brave and the courageous. But you also need 
humility to be courageous. Without humility rooted in truth, courage is just adventurism. But true courage comes from a humble heart. This is what we find in John the Baptist, fitting characteristics of the prophet who prepared for the coming of the Lord. And in our own times, when you have a courageous prophet who is also humble, you know the Lord is near. The advent of the Lord is just around the corner. And we need more of these prophets, among us especially, to prepare the coming of the Lord. I am reminded today of someone who became a friend of mine. I have talked about him in some episodes of The Word Exposed, but I remember him in a special way because for me, he embodies the spirit of courage and humility of John the Baptist, the late Cardinal Francis Xavier Van Thuan from Vietnam. He spent 13 years in prison, nine years of which in solitary confinement. Wow, it takes a lot of courage to be able to survive the aloneness, the desert of the prison cell. But when he was finally released, it was not words of rancor, of revenge that he proclaimed until his death. He just proclaimed the graciousness of God and he preached the graciousness of God even to the guards of the prison. His humility, his humility is miraculous for me. He did not say a single bad word against those who persecuted him because he knew he was a sinner and that he needed God. It was only God that made him stand the rigors of the desert in the prison cell. A rare combination of courage and humility. And you know, the hand of God is upon this person. The word has been exposed. Let us now fulfill it. <laughs>